you very much. Um, I'm delighted to be here and I'd like to start by uh, thanking the Institute of International and European Affairs for um, putting on, or organizing the conference and sponsoring it. It's um, clearly from the turnout and the, the engagement of the people, it's an idea whose time has come. So it's a, a, you know, I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be up here and present it on. And what I'd like to do is to talk about what ESB has been doing and what we, we are uh, in terms of energy efficiency, in terms of our home insulation scheme and our HALO free home energy efficiency program and the experiences we've learned from that which will be relevant to the new uh, national energy retrofit program. Um, we'll talk also, um, I'm delighted and, and, and excited to be able to launch today our new um, HALO home installation services and we'll talk a little bit about what we'll be offering customers with our home installation service um, package. Um, it's, well, it is noteworthy that today um, we are all here with a common purpose. We've a, we've a common ambition really which is to um, further the launch and the rollout of the, natural, of the National Energy Retrofit Programme and this, this is a hugely ambitious task and um, undertaking and it presents us with great challenges if we're to succeed in that. And so I'll turn briefly at the end of the present presentation to some thoughts on, that I have on some of the key further steps that will be necessary if we're to make a success of that program. Of course, the idea of energy efficiency isn't new and it's not new to ESB either. Um, the uh, ESB over the course of its 80 plus years has um, consistently promoted energy efficiency and has consistently engaged in the delivery of energy efficiency improvements for our customers. Um, you can see um, down at the bottom left hand corner um, that girl isn't turning off the light to save electricity, she's actually turning on the light. And the, that ad dates from, is, is taken from an ad that dates in the 30s, which was promoting electric lighting as an alternative to paraffin or candles or other form of lighting. And it's worth mentioning, that I think, that the International Energy Agency still see the uh, electrification of lighting as a key energy efficiency step in developing countries today. Um, many people will remember, I think, the, um, the uh, Gold Shield Homes uh, that, that ESB, uh, that the, and the, the Gold Shield Homes, um, that, where ESB promoted and provided a standard for um, a guaranteed standard for energy efficient electric homes. And it's a concept that we still got a lot to learn from. Um, you know, indeed, as you know, we, we move into the decarbonization of the electricity supply and the consequent electrification of heat. It's an idea that may come back again and come to the fore again in the future. Um, ESB's ETA awards was um, really the high point of, of ESB's campaign with business user, users where we, we were promoting energy efficiency among business users. Um, and that's now been ably superseded by the SEAI's excellent ESB-sponsored National Energy uh, Sustainable Energy Awards uh, which, uh... So looking at, at ESB's home insulation scheme, um, what ESB delivered a basic insulation package uh, to households that were at risk of fuel poverty across South Leinster and East Galway. Uh, the initiative complemented the SEAI's uh, warmer home scheme, uh, which, used social employment, uh, which used social employment scheme installers but they didn't at that time have good coverage across the South Leinster um, East Galway area. The scheme provided um, attic insulation and cavity wall insulation where appropriate and added in then you know, basic measures like draft exclusion, lagging jackets, CFLs, and was offered to home owners um, over 65 that um, were in receipt of fuel allowances. Originally we had planned to uh, provide this insulation package to 1,000 homes um, in the end, due to um, competitive pricing and there being less work involved per house, we were able to deliver it to, to insulate over 3,000 homes across the, the, the South Leinster East Galway area. Um, sorry, I guess the first um, lesson to be drawn um, fr was the importance of clear communications, particularly with this um, s sector, this customer segment. Um, you know, we designed and sent out a brochure with an application form, 
but um, you know, we still had a lot of questions coming in over the phone around you know, what should they do with the application form, was it really free, and so on. And I think you know, the, the, uh, the, the quality of communications and the clarity we bring to that communications um, is going to be critically important when we launch out on the National Energy Efficiency uh, Retrofit Programme, and particularly with the fuel affordability sector. What ESB brings to the table in terms of the, the program is, is our brand and our reputation. And whether it's ESB's home insulation scheme or whether it's our HALO free home energy survey, it's ESB's brand and reputation and the trust that people have in ESB to deliver um, trustworthy advice is, you know, is, is, is the basic proposition. So it emphasizes the need for us to manage the customer service, the quality of the service, and the safety of staff, contractors, uh, customers, and of the public. And I think what we have found is the need to always bring a strong customer focus to that engagement. So the question always is to, to, to see things from the customer's point of view. When things go wrong, which they will, and which they did, it's important to see that problem from the customer's point of view and to see what needs reasonably, be done to, reasonably done to rectify that from the customer's point of view. Um, so what's important, is, it's not that things won't go wrong, but firstly, when things do go wrong, it's how we respond to that and that we take a, um, the customer side. And secondly, that we learn from that and don't have, make the same mistakes a second time. A further point that's worth mentioning in, in the context of the National Energy Retrofit Programme is the need to improve both our definition of fuel affordability and uh, our ability to identify in practical terms the, house, the houses and the households where fuel affordability is an issue. Um, the Department of Communications, Marine and Natural Resources are, have, are convening a working group on this topic um, at the moment and it's important work and in the context of the investment that's going to be made in retrofit um, in the retrofit program it's important that that work comes to a conclusion um, in time for the, 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 the full rollout of the National Energy Retrofit Program. So um, back in July of last year ESB launched its HALOs free home energy um, efficiency surveys and between uh, last July and when the program closed earlier this year we carried out uh, some 20,000, we surveyed some 20,000 households and uh, who received a comprehensive information pack providing them with all of the information uh, that they needed, recommendations and information that they needed to move forward uh, and carry out the recommended improvements on their home. The objectives of the, the HALO uh, pr program were, were firstly to stimulate an awareness among householders of the kind of measures that they could undertake in their home and that would deliver uh, the benefits and improvements for them. The program was designed to, to support and promote the SEAI's um, Home Energy Savings Scheme grants and um, provided information to the householders on the technologies, on the available grants and the steps uh, and that they needed to take to go about and avail of those grants. Having raised awareness and promoted the availability of the, of the, 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 the grant support, I think we, we really wanted to make it as easy as possible for householders to move from that awareness, from the knowledge of what they needed to do, to actually taking the next steps and uh, moving to carry out the, the home improvement measures. Um, we provided them with an estimate of costs for the measures that, for their home. We provided them with benefits, um, you know, the, the typical sa the savings, the typical savings that they might expect to achieve, and um, and uh, the payback periods, as well as a list of SEAI registered contractors who had agreed to um, undertake to provide a one-stop shop and to subject themselves to a quality assurance regime for work that they were carrying out under the HALO program. Um, while it was a free survey um, being offered to households, it still needed to be marketed and, um, and promoted uh, to get it off the ground. And we initially identified um, and, and focused on pre-1980s 
housing estates where we, we believed uh, that there would be, you know, the most work would need to be carried out and where the demographics were such that people were most likely to uh, move to actually getting that work done. And we supported that with direct mail, with, um, with leaflet drops and local advertising campaigns. We subsequently moved uh, from that to uh, national media and um, through, and most importantly, through word of mouth. And I think um, the, re the reputation of Halo as a no strings um, survey, which did exactly what it said it would do and gave, uh, gave useful and cl pr clearly presented advice to the householders really was its strongest um, selling point. And by the end of the, the program, what we found was that we did not need to undertake any further advertising, that the calls were coming in uh, consistently and steadily as people were saying, well, their friends, their neighbors, their relatives had had a HALO survey and they were, uh, that they had found it useful and worthwhile. Um, and it, it was a national, it, and it was a national program. We, we covered every corner. Um, the photo shows a team of surveyors setting out on a bitterly cold spring day um, on Inish Ear on the Aran Islands. Uh, the program was championed there by um, Paddy Crow from the Inish Ear Cooperative and promoted in, in the traditional manner from the pulpit by Father Joe Jennings. And um, needless to say, we had a great uptake on the island and we got a great welcome from everybody on the island as well. Following the survey, following the, um, the, 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 the closing uh, finish of the HALO um, free home energy survey program, we did carry out a callback survey um, on uh, the, the people who'd had a survey undertaken and uh, we questioned both the customer satisfaction from that and also uh, to assess the impact the program had in terms of people's intentions around um, the home energy uh, retrofit. And needless to say, um, there was a very high level of satisfaction with the survey itself, and it was, it was after all, a free survey. But we were particularly pleased, I think, that um, it, the, the, kind of, the feedback that came back were that the recommendations were clear, appropriate, and useful. And I think that's something that we don't always find uh, when, when people come out um, and with, on recommendations in terms of the retrofit. We asked, Halo, we asked um, the, our customers then whether they had had any work carried out um, following on foot of the HALO um, recommendations that they'd received, and over a quarter surveyed had done so. I, we think this is quite a creditable result, and um, this survey was carried out very shortly after the HALO program had closed, so we think those numbers, uh, given the time lags involved, those numbers are still growing. More interestingly, we then asked who had carried out the work and whether it was the, the installers, the SEI registered installers on the ESB list or others. And you can see that, in, um, that over, uh, only a fifth of the people surveyed had used uh, the, the, the installers that were listed on the ESB list, which really reinforces the, the strength of word of mouth. People, you know, when you're getting people to work on your home, people aren't going to uh, work on, on, off a list, what they want to know is a word of mouth recommendation that either it's somebody that has done work in their home before and that they were happy with or it's somebody who's recommended by a friend or somebody they know who's had work done. So all in all I think both in terms of the marketing and the promotion and the pickup of the HALO program and in terms of the work we found that kind of word of mouth and trust and confidence in that has been most important. We then asked, um, we asked customers then which measures um, they, they, they had carried out and we, as you can see from the slide here, the response was broadly in line with, uh, the, with the national picture. Almost two thirds of the work carried out was on um, attic insulation and cavity walls uh, um, followed by gas boilers and heating controls. And again, the message here is clear that even with substantial um, grant aid, customers are by and large um, only carrying out the least, the least expensive and the most cost effective measures. So if we're to achieve the ambitious targets that have been set out in the National Energy Retrofit Program, we will need to deliver a significantly greater proportion of the deep measures. And the question really is how can that be, this be achieved? 
We then asked customers whether what measures um, were planned and how likely they were to carry out work. And you can see from this slide again that um, of those likely to carry out work, um, almost half are likely to carry out um, attic insulation work, while nine out of ten people are, are unlikely to carry out um, external wall insulation. So the message again is the same, that people are very unlikely to go and opt for the deep uh, retrofit measures uh, without some, something, some further incentives, some further ways of making that uh, easy for them to do and e uh, easy for them to move forward. Unsurprisingly, the obstacles identified were um, over three quarters identified finance as the, the, the major obstacle and the major stumbling block, followed by um, see no benefits, interestingly. Um, So other, um, other experience we had from the, uh, the, the free surveys, we did organize information evenings um, at the early part of the campaign. And uh, for us, they didn't generate the interest that we'd expected or would have hoped for. We know it can work. Um, Jerry Hart and the Energy Smart Communities and Kodima have had a number of successful um, information evenings, but it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort to... Uh, to, to match up to, to beat match of the day, I suppose. A list of installers isn't adequate. Um, word of mouth really is, is what carries, uh, carries the day and has, has proved most effective for us. And um, you know, the importance of tracking customer performance. So we're delighted today to be launching our new Halo installation service. Um, our free energy service went into householders and carried out more than 20,000 surveys and gave householders recommendations. Today, um, we're going the further step and we'll be not only offering advice, but in a position to carry out a wide range of improvement measures for householders um, nationwide at competitive prices. The products offered to customers include energy efficiency measures such as attic and, and uh, cavity wall, internal and external wall insulation. Um, boiler replacement and heating controls, as well as um, ventilation systems. We're also offering um, uh, solar thermal along with um, air source heat pumps and uh, with, with uh, ventilation systems where that's appropriate or necessary. I'm pleased also to announce that uh, we've entered into an agreement with the Bank of Ireland, who will provide a Bank of Ireland HALO loan at uh, discounted rates to HALO customers. And the provision of finance is, is, is subject to um, Bank of Ireland's um, own criteria and terms and conditions. But again, it's one step, further step in making it easy for householders to move from sound and trusted recommendations to actually getting work, um, moving to getting those insulation measures carried out. The loans, incidentally, are, will be repayable over um, a longer period of time, more consistent with the, the, the payback measures um, of the energy efficiency. I said at the beginning that all of us were, uh, were gathered here with a common purpose um, to contribute to the design, the implementation, the rollout of the National Energy Efficiency Programme. The amb ambition is nothing less uh, than to realise 8,000 uh, gigawatt hours of energy efficiency and through delivering energy up efficiency upgrades to over 1 million homes effectively to upgrade the entire housing stock of the nation. Our ambition, of course, is that they're all halo homes. And, um, but we need to reflect honestly on what it will take to deliver uh, for this ambition to be realized. You know, in the current economic climate, is it feasible or real realistic uh, to, uh, to expect that householders will be able to fund uh, out of their own pockets, the, uh, the energy efficiency measures on the scale required. I mean, how many of those houses um, are finding it tougher to make ends meet than they did two or three years ago? How many of them are on reduced hours? How many of them are looking for work? Even with the generous grants that are available, uh, will they be in a position to pay that balance? With our banks struggling to achieve um, liquidity targets and to manage their bad debts, you know, is it reasonable to expect that they will be able to provide the kind of financing that's, that's going to be necessary to achieve our ambition of upgrading the housing stock? 
There is evidence that save as you, so-called save as you pay schemes could help remove financial obstacles. However, to date, you know, those, um, the evidence is limited and they're still only being piloted in the UK. However, where they have worked, or where, they, where, the, where the results are positive, they have largely, um, they have in common is that they are underpinned by legislation with, which either attaches the loan to the property or in some way as a statutory instrument attaches it to sidewalk taxes, for example, in the UK. Closer to home, uh, we have a mechanisms for, um, for example, uh, where if you sell a house, it's necessary to clear the second home tax or that liability carries on to the new owner. So what we would suggest is it is necessary uh, that these types of measures or these types of arrangements need to be considered um, in the current design of the National Energy Efficiency Retrofit Programme if we are to achieve that objective of, of upgrading every house on that street. We believe if the credit risk is minimised in this way, that it will be fe feasible to socialise any um, outstanding credit uh, uh, liabilities that there might bear, bear, they should be very small. And we also believe that if, if this approach is adopted, that funding will become available. A number of people have expressed interest in providing funding if the credit risk issue can be managed. In conclusion, um, ESB's home uh, insulation scheme and the HALO energy, uh, free energy survey did provide a, a very solid basis for ESB to move forward to enable us to launch our home installation services scheme. We're bringing our brand and our reputation uh, to the energy efficiency sector. Um, that's growing the market for everybody. Uh, we believe that, uh, that, it's, that it will be to the benefit of all and that, uh, that householders who would not otherwise have got work done Will, uh, will now move from thinking about it or thinking they ought to do it to actually taking those steps and getting the work done. The, the proposed um, National Energy uh, Retrofit Programme sets out a broad ambition and more than ever finance remains the problem and that's not going to improve in the near term. Um, we need to look at removing that obstacle, we need to look at innovative fi financing measures because um, otherwise customers at best are only going to carry out the most basic and, and the least expensive um, improvement measures. So to achieve that common objective that we have, we need to address the credit risk issue. And I think until we have experience of how this is going to work, it would be um, it, that um, the proposed program, how it will work, what kind of progress, what kind of uptake we're going to get, we really do need a soft launch of it. That was uh, part of the original consultation document. Um, that soft launch really now should be spread out over next year and ESB in launching its home installation services is preparing to deliver its part in, the, uh, new, in, the, in that common purpose. Thank you.